Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to install Windows 10 on a Mac that does not officially support it. Now if you try to install Windows 10 via the normal method of Bootcamp Assistant, instead of getting a screen that looks like this, install Windows 8 or later version, you'll get a screen that looks like this, install Windows 7 or install Windows 7 or 8.1 it will say. You won't get this install Windows 8 or later version, which is in other words, Windows 10. And the reason for that is because your Mac is not on the officially supported list of Macs that can run Windows 10. Okay, so if you go to this page, you can see here that these Macs, okay, and later, are ones that Apple officially supports installing Windows 10 on. But if you have a Mac that's say 2009 and later, they are well within the minimum spec of running Windows 10. It's just that Apple does not officially support installing it because they're only going to support these Macs here, okay? Now, the method we're going to use to get around this is what I call the manual bootcamp method. Now, this method is very simple and very straightforward if you follow the instructions. There is no hacking or messing around with command prompts. It's very straightforward. And at the end of it, you should have a fully functioning version of Windows 10, similar to that if you had a PC. Now, if you're asking the question, you know, will this method actually work for me, will it work on, on my Mac? Well, if your Mac is on the officially supported Window 8 installs, okay, so that is these computers here, then I can almost guarantee it will work 100%. Okay, and I know this because my Mac is this one here, the mid-2011 iMac, and I've installed Windows 10 Net using the method in this video, and it pretty much works flawlessly. Now, in case you don't know what Mac you actually have. And it's very simple to find out. Just go to the top left of the screen, click on the Apple logo, and then this first option down about this Mac, click on that, and it will tell you there what type of Mac you have. So my one says here, mid-2011 iMac. But say you've got an older Mac, okay, that's not on this list. Say you've got like a 2008 Mac that only is officially supported Windows 7. I can't guarantee that this method will work, but there's really no reason that it wouldn't work. The only thing I would say is that you need to make sure that your Mac is within the minimum spec of running Windows 7. Okay, so, you know, it needs to be an Intel-based Mac and it needs to have, you know, a minimum of 55 gigabytes of space, that sort of thing. But as I said, if your Mac is only officially supporting Windows 8.1 list, then this method should work for you. Now, before we begin our preparation, we just need two things. Firstly, we need a blank DVD. Now, I use a DVD-R, but you can use a DVD-RW if you'd like. Uh, we need this DVD to download the Windows disk image so we can install Windows 10 off of it. Some people have asked whether they can install Windows 10 using a USB drive instead of a DVD. I haven't tried it myself, so I can't tell if it'll work or not, but some people have said it has caused issues, and it's also more difficult to create a bootable USB on a Mac than a DVD, so I don't recommend it. However, if you have removed the DVD drive, okay, the super drive from your Mac for whatever reason, you need to replace it. You need to put it back in before this method will work. Okay, this is especially true for people who have, say, MacBook Pros, and they've taken out the super drive and put in a second hard drive. If you're one of those people, you will need to put the super drive back in and restore the original configuration. You cannot install Windows 10 on a MacBook Pro using an external DVD drive. It will not work. Okay, the second thing we need is a blank 16 gigabyte or larger USB 2 flash drive. Okay, it needs to be USB 2, not USB 3. And this is what we'll be using to download our drivers onto. Also, if you're using a Mac desktop computer, we preferably need the original Apple keyboard and we also need a mouse to go with it. It doesn't have to be an Apple mouse, just any mouse will do. So before we get around to installing Windows 10, we need to do our preparation and that involves doing three things. Firstly, we need to create a Windows 10 bootable DVD. Secondly, we need to download our bootcamp drivers onto our USB. And finally, we need to make a bootcamp partition on our hard drive. Now let's start off with creating our Windows 10 installation DVD. I've inserted my blank DVD, and what I want to do is I want to go to Google and type in Windows 10 ISO. Okay, we want this one here. Okay, so we need to select edition. So at the time of making this video, there's only one edition available. Then we need to select the language we want. So for me, that's English. And then it will ask us whether we want to download the 32-bit or 64-bit version. Now for the vast, vast majority of people watching this, we want the 64-bit version. 
the only people who ever need a 32-bit version are the people who are very, very old Macs, you know, like 2006 and earlier. Uh, if you ever want to find out more information about your Mac, what you can do is you can actually go to a web page called everymac.com. And if you go into everymac.com and actually find your Mac, so here is my one, the 2011 iMac, it will tell you all these detailed information. You can see there it says 64-bit. So now that our Windows 10 ISO has been downloaded, we need to burn it to disk. Now, if you have a relatively new OS installed on your Mac, so I'm using Sierra, then it is quite easy to burn a disk image to disk. You simply just right click and then press burn this image. If you're on an older version of OS X, then you may need to use a different method of burning the disk image to disk. You can find the relevant information online. So this is the Apple web page and it's showing the different methods. So this is Sierra, uh, you have Yosemite, El Capitan. So if you just do a bit of research, you'll find the correct method for the version of OS X that you're on. So once you finished burning the disk image onto disk, we then have our Windows 10 installation DVD ready. I'm just gonna leave that in the drive for the time being. So next we need to download our bootcamp drivers onto our USB stick. Okay, so these bootcamp drivers are gonna make sure that once Windows 10 is installed, everything is working smoothly. In order to do this, let's start by inserting our USB drive into our Mac, as I have done here. And then we need to format this USB drive so it can be read correctly by Windows 10. So how do we do this? Well, go to Spotlight Search and type in Disk Utility. Then we wanna click on our USB drive and then we wanna press erase. And then we need to make sure that the format is ms-dos-fat and that the scheme is master boot record. And then we press erase. And what it's going to do is going to erase everything that's on this USB drive and it's also gonna format it correctly. Once that's done, we need to download the bootcamp drivers. Now, how do we do this? Well, let's go back into search and type in bootcamp assistant. And then once we get to this screen, we just want to click the middle box one that says download the latest Windows support drivers from Apple. Press continue. Okay, and this is my USB drive here. And then when you get to the next screen, it will start downloading the drivers. Now the estimated time remaining, for me it was significantly more than what it actually said. So don't be worried if it looks like it's just stuck for a while, just let it continue and let it finish downloading its drivers. And once that's done, you'll get a message saying it's completed downloading the drivers. And what we want to do, is so we just want to close that off and we just want to leave our USB drive plugged in into our Mac and let us continue with the final stage we need to do in our preparation. So finally, we need to make a bootcamp partition on our Macintosh HD main hard drive. So like this one here, I've already made this partition. I'm gonna show you now how I did it. But before I do that, I just want to give a little warning and that is to those people who'd rather be safe than sorry. If you've got anything on your hard drive that is not replaceable, then I suggest now that you back it up to perhaps external storage, just in case you make a mistake. So how do we create the partition? Well, what we want to do is go to search and type in disk utility. And we want to go to our top level here, okay, our main hard drive. And if you haven't partitioned the hard drive, you will just have a single partition here, like a single blue line. But if you have already got a previous partition, you're gonna to need to delete that because we just want the single partition, the single Macintosh HD partition. So how we delete that previous partition, if you have one, I'll just show you quickly. If you have a previous installation of Windows and you want to remove it, say Windows 7 or 8, you can actually do that through Bootcamp Assistant, just load up Bootcamp Assistant and then press remove Windows 7 or 8. Now I'm just going to show you how to delete a partition on your hard drive. Maybe you've got a previous partition or perhaps you've made a mistake in creating your bootcamp partition and you want to delete it. This is how you go about doing that. So once we've done that, we are now ready to create our bootcamp partition on our Macintosh HD hard drive. So once again, go to the top level and then click partition. Now, in terms of how big you should make the partition, 55 gigabyte is what you need minimum, but it all depends on what you want to use Windows for. If you're planning on installing lots of software and games, 
you've got to make the size bigger accordingly. So I made mine about 120 or 160. That's on a 500 gigabyte hard drive, but it's really up to you. But however big you decide to make the partition, just make sure that you're sure on that size because we don't want to try and change the partitioning during the installation and we do not want to try and change the partitioning after Windows has been installed either. If you make a mistake and you want to change the partitioning size again, it's very easy, just press the minus button and then click apply. So now we've decided the size of the partition, we need to change the format to ms-dos-fat again and then we want to name the partition bootcamp in capitals like that and then we want to click apply and then press continue and then it will start creating the new partition, it will take a few minutes. Once that's done you can now see your new partition displayed there. So at this point we should have our three items ready for our Windows 10 installation, our bootable DVD, our USB with our bootcamp drivers on it and our bootcamp partition. So we are now ready to install Windows 10. Go to the top left corner and press restart. And as soon as you hear the Mac chimes play, press and hold down the option key until you get to this screen. Let's double click the Windows DVD icon. And this is gonna boot into the installer. The first screen you're gonna get is the language select screen, so select your language. Then you're gonna get the product key activation screen. If you do not have a Windows 10 product key yet, it's not a problem, you can still install Windows. Just press, I don't have a product key. And in the next screen, it will ask you which version of Windows 10 do you want to be installed, home or pro. If you're not sure which version of Windows 10 product key you're going to get, just select Windows 10 home, because it can always be upgraded to pro later but you can't downgrade Pro to Home without reinstalling. I should point out that you can attain genuine Windows 10 Pro keys from eBay sellers for no more than £10 or $10. Windows will state that it needs the partition to be reformatted as NTFS before it can install Windows, so press Format and do that. And then the installer will begin installing Windows 10. Now during the installation, a couple of times your Mac will restart but when it restarts, it will be restarting back into Mac OS. Now there's nothing to be worried about. All you have to do to continue the installation is click on System Preferences, then press Start Up Disk. And what we want is the Bootcamp folder here. Okay, we don't want the DVD. If you just click that and then press Restart, it will reboot back into the installation. Alternatively, if you're beside your Mac when it restarts and you hear the Mac chimes play again, you can actually do what you did before, which was just to hold down the option key and get into the start boot disk screen again, and then double click the Windows hard drive icon, and that will reboot back into the installer. And this technique also works for once Windows 10 has been installed and you don't want to have to go all the way into Mac OS just to get access to Windows 10. As soon as you hear the chimes play, hold down the option key and then double click that Windows hard drive icon and it will boot into Windows 10. The other thing just to note is that once you've rebooted back into the installer, you may get to a blank screen and the screen will just say press any key to boot from CD or DVD drive or something like that. Again, don't panic. Just don't press anything and eventually the screen will disappear and it'll carry on with the installation. Then once the installer has finished installing Windows, it will ask you to put in your Wi-Fi information. It will also ask you if you want to download the latest update. I suggest you leave it until after we've installed our drivers and we've got everything ready. The first time Windows boots into the home screen, because we had our USB drive with our bootcamp drivers plugged in, the bootcamp installer should pop up automatically. So click next. And what that's gonna do is gonna install all our drivers we need for our webcam, for our keyboard, for our graphics card, etc. If the bootcamp installer does not start automatically, then you're gonna to have to click on a USB drive and install the drivers manually. But once that's done, you should have a fully functioning version of Windows 10. But let's quickly troubleshoot a couple of potential problems you may have. Firstly, there may not be any audio coming out of the speakers on your Mac. We solve this very simply by going to settings. Then we want to type in sound. We 
we press this one here. And then we want to select speakers. And then we want to press set default. Don't just press OK because it won't change anything. You need to press set default. And you can see that little green tick there. And once you've done that, just use the volume keys on your keyboard and you should be able to hear audio. The other problem you may come across is that you may notice if you open up an application like CCleaner that instead of listing your exact graphics card, it may just say something like 6600 series or 6700 series. I got around this quite simply by opening up the USB drive and my bootcamp drivers on it again. I didn't uninstall the old driver, I just simply installed it again on top of the first one. and then opening up the application again, you can see my exact graphics card listed there. It doesn't say 6700 series, it now says 6750M, the exact name of my graphics card. It is also worth noting that if you are using a Mac Pro and you've installed a third party graphics card, you will need to download the relevant Windows drivers from NVIDIA or AMD. Once you've got all your drivers installed, remember then you can go to Windows settings and then download the latest updates and you can also register your product key if you haven't already done so. I want to quickly give a few more pieces of advice. Firstly, you don't need to try and install a newer version of Bootcamp Assistant. Some people have suggested putting 6.1 or something on it. It's no need for that. The older version of Bootcamp Assistant 5.1 has all the drivers you need for your old Mac. You can access Bootcamp Assistant by pressing the diamond icon in a system tray. You can't manually update Bootcamp Assistant, but from time to time it may pop up asking you to install updates, which you can do so. And that diamond icon is also what you press to get back to macOS. If you're in macOS and you want to get back to Windows, remember you do it through System Preferences and then Startup Drive and then press the Bootcamp folder. Finally, do not try to change the partitioning again in macOS. If you try to change the partitioning size on either your main Macintosh HD or the Bootcamp partition, it will prevent you from booting into Windows again, just giving an error message and you'll have to redo the installation all over again. So that should be it. Windows 10 running successfully on a Mac that does not officially support it. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if it was, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching this video.